I'm here at the Fort McDowell Casino here with Rick Morones, uh, trainer of Benjamin Whitaker. Now, Rick, let's talk about the fighter that you know you're training tomorrow, Benjamin. How is his preparation uh, for tomorrow? And you know, what do you see in Benjamin that's really he's you know what's really going to show tomorrow? Uh, one thing about Benjamin that separates him from a lot of fighters is um, we got another example of that today at the weigh-ins here. Um, Benjamin's very dedicated to the sport, to his craft, and um, you know he's in the gym every day. He works hard. And um, you know he's always at weight. You know, a couple of people asked me today, you know, what's his weight? I said, well, I can't answer. If I ask him, he's gonna feel disrespected, you know. So uh, he's always at weight. You know, you see some of these guys at the elite level, and they're still struggling to, you know, and that shows. To me, weight is a is a precedence of dedication to a fighter. So you know, Benjamin's always ready to go, man. He's always in shape. He's very dedicated. He lives in the gym, and, and come tomorrow night, he'll show you uh, exactly what he's about. Now, uh, the opponent that you're facing, um, did you have an opportunity to study him a little bit? Yeah, yeah, he's a good fighter. You know, he's been in there with some tough kids as well. And um, that's what we're looking for, you know, to get to that next level and to, to be a good, to be known as a great fighter. You know, you got to step in the ring with, with good fighters. And, you know, Benjamin's one thing about him, I call him the Austin Trout of boxing, you know. Um, Austin Trout is a very good friend of mine. And, um, you know, he had to do it the hard way, you know. He had to get his name out there the hard way. And, beating tough fighters and being the opponent to be side in most of his career. And Benjamin, same thing. Benjamin has beaten three undefeated fighters. He's been in the ring with two Olympians, you know, so, you know, he, he's overcome. He's overcome all of the obstacles to be victorious. So that speaks volume of the kind of skill level that Benjamin possesses. Now, uh, this flashback, a couple months ago, um, you trained Kirkland for the Canelo fight. Um, you didn't have the, the victory that you, 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 know, you wished for and you worked hard for with him, you know what? What you know? Looking back, what could he have do? What could uh, Kirkland have done better to get the W? You know, there's a lot of things that Kirkland have done better. You know, it was just one of them things where, you know, I had two months to work with James. Mm -hmm. You know, and you, trainers out there can tell you, know, it'll take two months. You know, we're not miracle workers. You know, we do what we can with what we have. You know, so um, you know, James was a fighter who was already made. You know, we just kind of try to touch up the little things and, and, and do the best we can to pull out a victory. Um, with that being said, you know, it's a lot of these fighters with so many fights, they're in their zone already as far as what they can do. I um, also worked with former world champion Rafael Papito Vasquez, and um, it was another situation where, you know, these guys, are, they got their ways, they got their habits, and, you know, it does take more than two months to, to get rid of. So again, you know, James fought his heart out. I thought, you know, people still should still show him that respect he deserves, because he's a guy that no matter what the outcome is, he comes to fight and he gives the fans exactly what they want. Now, um, what did you tell Kirkland after the fight? Because, uh, you know, a fight like that where you're facing Canelo, you know, a superstar, and, you know, Kirkland's so hungry, he, you know, he wants to have his name out there, and, if he, you know, if he would have won that fight, you know, his name and his, you know, popularity, sky, you know, sky rises. Um, what did you tell him after the fight to, you know, maybe encourage him or, you know, to give him some positive feedback? Well, you know, in a situation like that, there's a lot of emotions running through the locker room and stuff like that, and, you know, you can sit there and think to yourself, what could you tell him, you know? Um, all you can tell him is to keep his head up, you know? He fought, he didn't just lose to anybody, you know? He lost to Canelo Alvarez, so, you know, it, it was, like I said, one of those situations where all you could do was tell him to keep his head up, you know, go back to the drawing board and, you know, see what we could have done, what we couldn't have done better, and, you know, move on. All you can do is move on at that level, you know? You can't sit there and cry and weep about those things because it happens to the best of everybody. Um, but, again, he fought his heart out, and, you know, he gave a lot of respect, I think, that, that people, who didn't give him a chance in that fight. And also, he had some good moments in that fight, you know. Um, he had Canelo on the ropes at times, working his body. Canelo even, he, he, here's one thing that points out to me big was Canelo, after the fight, in an interview, he said, we got a little tired because the fight started so fast. Here's the thing, James fights like that every second of every round. <laughs> you know, so our goal was to get into that fifth and sixth and seventh round and see what Canelo was gonna do at that, at that level, at that point. But um, it didn't get that far, but you know, it's all good. You know, so James knows, man, he's back to the drawing board. He's gonna get ready for another fight by the end of the year. And uh, you know, so see what happens next. Yeah, so the game plan was, you know, to, to attack Canelo from first round to 12 rounds. You know, that, that was just, you know, what, you can't, you're gonna, you know, you don't expect James to go in there and throw three, four jabs and, 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 and you know, box, you know, with footwork. It's not the kind of fight. James is a beast, James is a dog. You know, James is a guy that's gonna go get you. You unleash him and he goes and gets you. So that was a you know, th that was a plan. I don't think it was a secret to anybody. I think even Canelo's team knew exactly how we had to come out and fight. So, you know, we fell short, it happens, it happens to everybody, to the best of us. Um, and, and you move on. 
Well, Rick, you know, for being such a young coach, you know, you you know the sport well, and you know you're you're very you know, Benjamin's fighting. Um, you know, I'm excited to see your fighter. I'm excited to see the the work you both put in inside the gym. It'll be my first time watching him, and uh, you know, I'm ready to see you guys uh, uh, showcase here for us Arizona. You know. I'm here at the Fort McDowell Casino here with Rick Morones, um, trainer of Benjamin Whitaker. I think this is going to be awesome.